own town has always been a good place for a parade. But how well does it work for us the rest of the time? Today, people are beginning to accept the inevitability of living closer together. Even in the suburbs, our experience is more and more urban. So people are becoming more interested in making the urban environment livable. Half of what we call livable has to do with social and economic conditions. But the other half has to do with the dynamic interaction between man and his physical surroundings. What combinations of spatial stimuli make some places human and others inhuman? The answers are all around us in any urban environment. imaginary cardboard city can be free of political and financial pressures. So what would you put in an imaginary city to make a city for people? What is it about a place that makes you feel human? or less than human. Just as when you interact with people, you have social experiences, when you interact with space, you have spatial experiences. Moving in space is a spatial experience. When you go up a hill or down, it's a spatial experience. Looking out a window, going under a bridge, walking across an intersection, playing ball in the street, swinging in a playground, walking under a building that hangs out over you. These are spatial experiences. Pleasing your senses can also be part of a spatial experience. Once the band goes home, the pleasure of being in this space still remains. All your senses are alive. What are the spatial experiences that appealing places offer? What variety is possible in the features of a city? 
Think of the various places in a city just as you think of the rooms in your home. The ceiling is the sky. The walls are the sides of buildings. The floor is the street and sidewalk. Why not ask public places to be as livable as your home? The floor. It's the surface and patterns people walk or ride on. The sidewalks and street make a pattern of bands of concrete with a band of asphalt in between. I think concrete is dull. I like the textures. Here in Vernazza, Italy, people walk on a distinctive texture and pattern, a visual stimulus. In addition, the floor tilts. The sloping is a spatial stimulus. Whether you're coming up a hill to the top or going down to the bottom, you have a destination and a sense of arriving. The street's not just a street, it's a human gathering place. Walking on a slope can make you more aware of yourself in a space. Sometimes the slope is so steep it must be steps, as here on the Via Appia in Perugia, Italy. A long flight of steps doesn't have to be unpleasant. That's good for one's health, actually, to be able to climb the stairs and sort of work out as opposed to having to roll to work, you know, or whatever. When you have objects that are unexpected and steps and things, it just makes you pay attention to everything a little bit more, and that's, you know, that's what life is all about. Why is it that most picturesque places have steps? Maybe human places aren't always the most convenient. Traditionally in America, people started city building by leveling the hills. Once a city is leveled, it's lost part of its identity. Its geography is no longer unique. great kick out going across the bay and just looking back at the city. I think the hills help an awful lot because of the, the difference in perspective and dimension that they give you. This couldn't be any city anywhere. San Francisco is an exception. In the 1890s, developers were cutting down its famous Telegraph Hill until they were stopped by a citizens group. walls, the sides of a city room. The buildings are the walls of the room with windows and doors as decoration. Many buildings together can make the wall as they do here in Perugia. 
Since we're closest to the lower part of the wall, what we see at eye level matters most. In old buildings, there's a complexity in materials. In modern, the variety comes from reflections. Holes can be in walls to make another change in the space. A small street becomes an open door to a little hallway in the city. Holes in the wall can also be windows giving views. Views aren't always panoramas. They can be just a look to another place. Everybody has a right to a view. Even if you have to go, go out on a street corner somewhere and look down, that corridor from that street corner should be kept open. Arcades are another kind of opening in walls, and walking here is a different spatial experience. You're on a sidewalk next to the street, but the wall of the buildings has moved out over you. You're sheltered from the weather and separated from cars by the columns. Arcades aren't just confined to Europe. Remember the westerns? That covered raised sidewalk outside the saloon is an arcade, and most American frontier towns had one. Arcades can have many different proportions. There aren't very many arcades um, anywhere, you know, except in Italy and uh, you know, a couple of European countries. I guess in, in this winter weather, it would be really nice. Arcades are another strong spatial stimulus. ceilings, the top of the walls. Imagine the sky as the ceiling of an outdoor room. It's framed by the top edges of the buildings. They're like old-fashioned moldings in a living room. Many different building profiles frame the sky. Thank you. 
there are other kinds of partial ceilings. Well, it is nice to look up and see trees against the sky. I think that being in contact with things which are parts of nature really help people have a sense of life. Well, they, they help give you a visual relief against the hard edges of man-made things. And aren't umbrellas and awnings also ceilings? They define a little place in a larger room. Glass is a dramatic kind of ceiling that filters light and shelters people below. Is spatial variety the only physical element that makes cities human? Sometimes it seems as if just being old makes a city more human. Like here in Savannah, Georgia, or here in Boston, Massachusetts. Or further back in history to Renaissance and medieval cities in Italy. The modern city, as we think of it, was born here. While most of our ancestors were still farming, Italians were developing the art of making cities for people. They have a flair for living in their historic places instead of preserving them as museums. Here in Milan's Galleria, it's the appeal of the physical space itself which has made this a gathering place for over a hundred years. For the same reason, the Via Appia is used as much today as it was in Roman times. Looking back in history, we see how other people made places we still find human. Even the small towns can teach us something about today's urban experience because their buildings fit together like a miniature big city. Their public places are compact yet appealing. Much of what we've been doing in cities during the last 50 years seems to be eroding that human quality. Perhaps cities are an element that we now have, have built up, and I think we didn't know quite what we were doing in the building up. Change is not always progress. In cities, when people are in a human place, they know it. It's just pretty. I think it's, you know, a nice place to go. It's relaxing. I like the atmosphere. It's natural. Well, it's very pleasant and restful. Here from Tennessee, and uh, I think it's one of the prettiest places I've ever been in my life. It's kind of like uh, uh, Paris, France, in some sections of it. These people appreciate this place. Isn't it possible that wherever there's a river in a city, there can be a river walk? Before we build or change our cities, we need to be able to tell each other specifically what we want or don't want. The rapid growth of cities put pressure on planners, politicians, architects, developers to focus on solving cities' practical problems people's human needs took a back seat to efficiency. People relate to each other, and at the same time, they relate to space itself. Human scale. We're a particular size, and we measure the size of things around us in relation to our size. Just like animals, we need things around us to stimulate our senses. Man is without a physical shell, so shelter or the protection of trees is appealing. Most everyone likes to feel a part of the human community. We understand and value our historic roots and like to see visible symbols of our history. Is it any wonder that people are dissatisfied with monotonous cities? What is the nature of city spaces? The city is built up around you. You are in the open spaces between the buildings. 
Here in Union Square, San Francisco, is a distinct place. Squares offer more room for human activity and a spatial contrast to downtown streets. Just as in Louisburg Square, Boston. It's a very special place that a lot of people in Boston come to. Squares are just as definable as this little street and quite unlike endless streets. These days, the very size of our cities make streets laid out on a rectangular grid monotonous. The familiar intersections leave no place for people in the street, except if they're going somewhere. But open space for people's use can result from a more irregular street pattern. That's one reason I like the plazas, I guess, too. You can sort of get out and sit next to a tree. You can't just cram people into buildings and expect them to survive. There's no way in the world you can do it. There are many kinds of public spaces left between the buildings. Plazas, parks, steps, playgrounds. All the places between the buildings count as well as all kinds of streets, alleys, traffic arteries, business streets. But every business street doesn't have to look alike. California Street in San Francisco is a typical commercial street. But it seems to have a little different atmosphere than most. There's a place to sit, screened from the traffic. The relationship between the sides of a city room and the width of the street that separates them affects people. Won't the balance between the contemporary and historical be lost when this building is demolished? You know, what a cable car's had, besides being a better form of transportation than smelly buses, they had joy, they had fun. The holes in this room occur only at the street intersections. The mixture of contemporary and historical elements on California Street makes it a vital, yet human place. Via Manzoni, in Italy's largest commercial city, Milan, is a similar street. The pace and style of life are equally modern, and the traffic's the same. Each part of the physical environment here is more complicated. And even though the walls include modern shops, their old features have not been obscured. The old buildings are preserved by law, but that doesn't stop the expression of contemporary design. Frequent holes in the walls like this were not a spatial feature on California Street. For the passerby, they are a quick view into quiet places away from the street.
Walking under awnings is another spatial change. Sometimes holes in the wall open to spaces, making a view off the street. These open spaces have many uses. But each opening from the street makes a view to this park built in the Renaissance. The street, the park, and the openings between work together. In Perugia, a modern commercial city, the favorite downtown area is the medieval and renaissance center of town. The Corso Vanucci might look like an ordinary city street, but a more complicated series of spatial changes is taking place. The floor, which is the street, undulates very slightly down and then up. The walls also curve back and forth on another plane, like waves. For centuries, this has been a gathering place, but increasing traffic started to crowd out the people. So two years ago, the citizens of Perugia banned the car. Walking is the difference between feeling the city's textures with your bare hand or through a big steel glove. And I think it's very sad that most Americans have to run to Europe to find a charming city. That they're turned off by American cities. We're so, our cities are so industrialized and they're so clogged with traffic. La tranquillità di poter allevare i nostri figli the historic character of this place wasn't sacrificed to the city's growing commercial needs. The smaller streets and alleys are a contrast and another part of the spatial variety. Haven't these minor streets been ignored in modern cities? Even in a modern city with tall buildings and traffic, like Atlanta, Georgia, there's a place that offers similar experiences. Peachtree Plaza is an arcaded space just off the main street in the middle of downtown Atlanta. Trees and sculpture soften the building outlines. And as in Todi and Cortona, this floor has several levels. Putting a place to sit here has made a downtown gathering place. It's convenient, number one, and it's, uh, it's like eating outside on your patio or something. And you... That's right. I think it's a combination of the pretty girls and the trees. <laughs> I like it because you can get out outside of the building for a while, get out in the open and enjoy looking at everybody else. It's unique in a way, you know, with the fact that you have trees growing up out of the middle of the city. We've uh, more or less greened up Atlanta right here in this little area. 
kind of uh, a way of coming together with people, you know. This is one of the places where what happens at eye level matters more than the height of the buildings. Peachtree Plaza is a modern, very human place. Here in the Italian hill town of Todi is a medieval city square of the 14th century. The sides of medieval buildings are the walls of the room with holes at the corners. Great architecture? No. The masterpiece here in Todi is the whole place. Views out passageways. Arcades frame another view. The many levels of stairs are another kind of living space, not merely the practical means of going in and out of the buildings. Cortona is a Renaissance town built about 200 years later than Todi. The main square primarily owes its character to its many levels. The streets reach it from above and below. One side of the plaza has a second story with a market, shaded by an arcade. Larger open space like this has room both for cars and for human activity. The designers of the cannery, a modern shopping spot in San Francisco, had the same interest in creating a human center. As in Todi, many different levels. Places to watch people in the central open space. in the walls, framed by the arches of arcades. Well, this place is really nice. I think the different levels, I think the different shapes and, and shadows and ways that people can move, not always in straight lines, up and down and back and forth. Spatial stimuli of the cannery in San Francisco are possible in any suburban shopping center. Hello. 
This looks like any continental street at first. The Galleria Victor Emmanuel is an intersection of two business streets in downtown Milan. It's a place for human activity, not cars. after the Galleria opened, a hailstorm broke every pane in this glass ceiling, but the people's affection for the gathering place kept the city from replacing the glass with a solid roof. Mark Twain visited here in 1867 and wrote in his chronicle, we spend most of our time in the vast and beautiful arcade or galley, or whatever it is called. I should like to live in it all my life. This is an urban place that's appealing without trees or grass. The widening of the space at the intersection makes a focus where people meet, talk, read the paper, like Union Square. Couldn't we relate the Galleria to what people are searching for in our cities today? Entering Oslo, Italy is an exciting spatial experience. Irregular street patterns make complex spatial changes. Curving streets make different views and allow for a special place like this. sidewalk is sheltered by arcades. Robert Browning, the English poet, called Azolo his first love among Italian cities. <laughs> Its spaces aren't so convenient, they have another value. Historic Savannah seems to have the same quiet appeal as Oslo.
These squares in the downtown area of Savannah were planned in 1733 by James Oglethorpe. As a military man, he wanted places where the militia could exercise. At the same time, he was an 18th century humanist who believed in open spaces for his citizens' emotional and physical health. Today, Oglethorpe's open spaces still are small parks, squares, Each square is connected by streets acting as corridors to the next square. The streets are laid out parallel and at right angles, as in our conventional cities, but they are interrupted by the squares. It's a variation of the strict grid system. Each square is a neighborhood focus of human activity. In the 1930s, the people of Savannah resisted proposals to cut streets through the squares. Today, cars still have to slow down to go around the squares, a more human pace. Notice how you can stand in one square and look to the next, the view alone can make you want to go there. This is absolutely God's green acres. Long in February, March, the azalea's blooming here. That's when y'all ought to come in and take your pictures. We have beautiful squares, and we take real good care of our squares. San Antonio, Texas, has a river cutting an irregular pattern through its streets. The river walk is an oasis from the streets above. Many cities are on rivers and lakes and make so much less use of them for people's enjoyment. The floor is a variety of patterns and reflections on the river and the walk. The new uses found for the old buildings give the area a distinct flavor and make clear its historic roots. The different levels allow people alternative views. They're not like uh, a regular downtown area. I like it because I think that you can relax down here and you can eat and ride the riverboat and things like that. I think it's a great place to come to. I think it's, I think I'm, I'm kind of glad that it is downtown because you could come downtown like when you come to buy your clothes and stuff and you be tired, you walk down through the river and at night you walk down there with the person that you like or something, get away from all them brats at home. The San Antonio River used to be a dumping ground behind the buildings. It became the river walk because of the action of women's clubs and an architect. They had the insight to recognize what they could make of what was already there. 
Look back at some of the places we visited. On California Street, citizens planted the trees. And one woman stopped the city from phasing out the cable cars. People of Savannah resisted proposals to cut streets through the squares. The Galleria in Milan was the result of a call from the mayor to the public asking what to do with an unappealing part of the city. Places for people are at least as important as places for cars. Today, architects, planners, and critics are designing and writing about streets for people. Every city has its own unique geography, history, and climate. Isn't the recognition of this individuality the key to making our cities more human? Harmony between a place and the people living in it is possible anywhere and at any time in history. Human cities aren't some kind of cosmetic extra. Winston Churchill once said, we shape our buildings and they shape us. I think we've learned something from having crowded ourselves into cities to the point where the human part of us said no more. We've begun to turn around and say, what, what have we done and now what can we do to, to change it? How can we invite our soul in a city?